In this tutorial, we're gonna do an animated displacement loop. This is an infinity loop. As soon as it gets to frame 100 and goes back to one, you won't be able to tell that anything has happened at all. It just loops seamlessly. Anyways, let's get to it. Let's click on file, new, general, don't save. First thing we wanna do is select our default cube, press X, delete, shift A. In the example we used, Suzanne, the monkey head, right click Shade Smooth, go to your Modify Properties, Add Modify, Subdivision Surface Modify, and put this on at least two. The more subdivisions, um, the different effect your, and usually the better effect your displacement would work. So we're gonna add a displacement, click New, go down here to your Texture Properties, click on Image or Movie, and select Clouds. And don't worry about this, we go back to our modify properties and just change the strength to 0 0.3. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, while we're here, we might as well quickly add a material, new. And I'm just gonna change this to glossy and make it 0 0.15. And I'm gonna give it an environmental texture. You can go to hdrhaven.com to download one. Open, downloads, I'll find one I've recently downloaded. There, there we go, open. And I'm gonna to go to my render view so we can see if it looks all nice and shiny before we create this beautiful loop. If you've got a potato PC, it might take a while, but there you have it, it's looking pretty good. All we need to do now is go to our render settings, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflection, and make sure we're not facing the door. And if you want, you can even turn on refraction for an extra touch. That looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we want to do, I'm going to turn off Bloom for the time being, is numpad 7. I'm going to press Shift A, and I am going to select a curve, a circle, S2. Then I'm going to press Shift A, Latus, S2. Numpad 1 for front orthographic view. And I'm going to S scale this out. This is just personal preference, so it's perfectly in line there, which I'm quite happy about. And then I'm going to select, hold and shift and select this. I'm making sure the circle is light orange and the latest is dark orange. So I can press Control P and click Object. Now the circle is the parent to the latest, and that's very important. So now when we select this over here, we go to our modify properties, we can change the coordinates from local to object. And the object we're gonna select is the latest. And that's looking pretty grand. I'm quite happy with that. Now all we need to do now is animate it. So we're gonna lift this up over here. And we're not gonna animate the latest, we'll an animate the curve. So with the curve selected, I'm gonna press I to insert a keyframe and click on rotation. Then I'm going to go to frame, in this case, 101, and go to frame 101. Ends on 101 and go to frame 101, and press, press R to rotate this. X, sorry, Z, R, Z. You have to rotate on the Z axis. R, Z, 3, 6, 0. Click. Press N. You'll notice that it's moved over here. Then you can just press I, rotation. And you want to make the end frame actually 100, not 101. All right. So now when we go back to keyframe one and we press spacebar and we press play, it should animate seamlessly. We'll see if it works now once it's 100. Yep, it's seamless. So this would be a perfect GIF. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.